All right, welcome everyone to the October IGRI Research Seminar. My name is Tabor Mondam. I'm the coordinator for the IGRI. And for this month's presentation, for our presenter, we have Lisandro Liu. So Lisandro Liu is a professor and researcher at the Gutilio Vargas Foundation School of Public Policy and Government in Brazil. His research focuses on public policy, municipalities, federalism, and data governance in Brazil. He received his PhD in sociology from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in 2019. And his presentation today is titled The Design of Data Governance in Brazil. So, Lisandro, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, David. It's a great honor for all of us to present here and be here today. I thank Saba and for the opportunity to show our research. Uh, I will begin the presentation. Uh, let me see. And uh, are you guys seeing the, the screen? Perfect. So our, our research is entitled The Design of Data Governance in Brazil. The group is made by uh, a lot of people, Fernando Filgueiras, uh, Maria Teresa, Tainá, and Gabriela. Fernando is not able to show today, but he is a very important member of this, this group. So uh, we, we start our presentation, present a, a very important uh, mark in the Brazilian institutional arrangement is the general data protecting law is LGPD, is a law was approved in 2018 in Brazil. The law was influenced uh, among other things by the European Data Protection Policy, uh, GDPR. In addition, of course, it's important to mention that since 2016, there have been existing a lot of initiative to build strategies aimed to the digital governance in Brazil, which also need to allow to organize the process of collecting, using shared data and protecting the privacy of the individuals. In 2021, our group was com composed in that, in that year, and our primary focus was in the policy design frameworks. We don't start uh, here with IG framework, but in the policy design framework, uh, our concern was understand the process of building digital governance, digital government policy, and implementing the data governance policy in the federal in the federal level in Brazil, uh, our group began the discussion concerned with the field of policy design, policy problems, the objectives, and their instruments. Uh, we built our first study aimed to understand the process of designing the data governance policy in the federal government in Brazil. It was a qualitative study based on interviews. That study was published in the Policy Design and Practice uh, Journal. Uh, in this first phase, our focus uh, was understand uh, how the federal government uh, implement the policy. Just after that, we look how the states and the municipalities were implementing or regulating the LGPD. So a uh, methodological question up here, how is possible to investigate all the states and the major cities in Brazil? What theoretical and methodological strategy should we choose? Uh, we consider here the data has a common pool resource like Ostrom in the same terms uh, who Ostrom uh, worked uh, several years ago. LGPD requires to each government body to create the data management agents, controller, commissioner, operator, 
and a broad of uh, bureaucratic rules to regulate data governance. Our aim is understand how subnational entities develop their strategies and create their own institutional grammar uh, to put together the LGPD uh, arrangement. The, like US, Brazil is also a federation, but we are a three times federation. We have the federal level, the state level, and the municipality level. Is the municipality is the same as city uh, uh, in these terms. And uh, this kind of administrative and political uh, framework, all the 27 states and more than 5,000 municipalities has to uh, build their own data policy, data government policy. So it's a very complex uh, institutional arrangement. The LGPD, LG, LGPD is the major policy, but the subnational entities need to put together their own strategy. Uh, the states and municipalities should not create a new data governance policy. However, they are expected to develop a strategy regarding how they will apply the law in their territories. For example, uh, the uh, smart cities projects, for example, they need to visualize and work with this kind of necessities, but is a local necessity, not a federal one. So a smart city, a smart city project, for example, is uh, the regulation is, is up to the municipality, not up to the federal level, for example. In the next few slides, we're going to present the work we've uh, already done in, in implementing the IG in Brazil, describing the data collection methodology for the research and explain the analytical, analytical approach we have incorporated to the IG. So just to finish this, my first part, the IG came, for, came to us in the policy design big framework. We choose the IG because the, this framework is perfect to understand and fit perfect in the very complex uh, federation that is Brazil. So, Maria, now is, is, is your time. Thanks, Professor. So, to start the discussion on Instituto Gramar 2 in Brazil, our research group analyzed in 2022 the implementation of the 27 states strategy and LGPD. The research resulted in the publication of the article Instituto Gramar of Data Protection and Privacy in Brazil. The first Portuguese lingua publication on AG. This research so, uh, so to train so three questions. Number one, what is the institutional framework of the strategies adopted by the states within the context of the Federation for the Protection of Personal Data and Citizens Privacy? Uh, number two, what are uh, what are the implications of in frameworks for the effectiveness of data protection in Brazil. And number three, who the components of the AG appear in the institutional grammar of data protection in Brazil. So that article concludes that the data protection strategy formulated by the states are more oriented towards uh, bureaucratic control of data protection, uh, harder than the, the actualization of the American season rights. We use a more descriptive approach to the EG in order to implement the methodology for the first time adapting into the Portuguese language and the, to the type of the regulation that exists in Brazil. And to a, 
2023, we began a new research for looking at the strategy of Brazil emancipation. In the study we are about to present, uh, we have adopted a new approach using an analytical tool based on natural language process. Um, our effort dialogues with uh, the composition of Dunlop and the other researches that uh, the AG researches need to go beyond the discussion. So now, um, Yabi, please. Thanks. So our, our research argues that more complex norms create uncertainties for local data governance. In a sense, it opens up space for both discussing the quality of norms institutionalization and debating its implementation and effects. We argue that data is a strategy resource for cities to develop public policies in various fields, such as urban mobility, smart cities, public safety, and more. The research aims to investigate the institutional grammar of data protection and privacy in Brazilian municipalities, seeking to answer the question, what are the strategies adopted by municipalities for the protection of personal data and the privacy of citizens? The analysis for scientific production began with data collection and consolidation of the database corresponding to the LGPD legislation of Brazilian capitals and other municipalities with over 500,000 inhabitants. In total, 27 decrees were, an were analyzed corresponding to 12 capitals and 15 municipalities in January 2023 to understand the grammatical syntax of institutional statements. We use the ID to organize empirical data and natural language processing tools to analyze institutional confidence. So after processing municipal degrees using the institutional grammar framework, all institutional statements were constructed into sentences to identify their syntax elements. So attribute, diontic, aim, object, condition, and there are else that informs municipal strategies for data protection and governance. In this way, uh, we created analytical uh, categories based on the categories of the IG framework, as you can see here. So in the attribute category that allows us to identify the actors responsible for the viability of the institutional statements in the LGBT legislation, we have citizens and users of the data, um, companies, controllers office, attorney's office, data protection officer, data controller, municipal governments, and etc. As for the um, diontic that allows us to identify whether institutional statements are pres prescriptive or non-prescriptive, prescriptive, we have we use the classification, allowed mandatory and revocation cancellation. The aim, which is the ac active part um, to which the action of an institutional statement refers, is identified as follows, competence, data collection and processing, data sh sharing, certification and compliance, authorization, monitor monetary, standardization, rights, the object, the, re the recipient of an action, is identified as governments, management and process, product service, natural resources. Similarly, uh, for the conditions, uh, which are the set of variables that define when and where an institutional extension applies, we use two classifications, specific deadlines and conditions and un uh, undefined deadlines and conditions. Finally, for the or else, which are the consequences that an institutional statement assigns to detect, detect non-compliance along with the other components of the statement, with, we uh, identify fines, uh, suspension of act activities, revocation. So this is how we used to implement the IG framework. Um, and here I will bring uh, for you guys an example of a statement. So an example, the Municipal Data Ma Management Committee must appoint a data protection officer within 30 day calendar days, otherwise the committee will be unable to operate. So the attribute here is the Municipal Data Management Committee, the IOMTIC, must, in the sense of obligation, aim, appoint, object, a data protection officer, condition within 30 calendar days, or else otherwise the committee will be unable to operate. So this is how we use the IG framework. And in the next slides, we will show a 
prescriptive analysis of the institutional statements. So in general, we analyze data from 27 uh, cities. There were 905 institutional statements. And we will uh, then present the analysis using a natural language processing, the NLP technique. On the next slide, a table created by cross tabulation will demonstrate the interaction between uh, attribute and object and other pres prescriptive uh, characteristics of the data. Uh, Lisandro, please. Now, thank you, Gabriela, for the for the presentation. So, guys, this is our uh, a descriptive data, a descriptive data of we are collecting, we have been collecting since January. Uh, this is the municipality framework in data governance, working analyzed by the IG framework. We are seeing, for example, the municipal the municipal governments is the major uh, actor in this kind of re regulation. And basically they, in the framework, in the rules, they are set competences for themselves. Uh, we, we see few uh, citizens and users and councils and private, private companies in, that, in this uh, data governance framework in the municipalities. Basically, is a very status-centric uh, policy. So we, we res they reservate little space, a few space to the citizens and they set right and to the citizens and a few space to, to work with uh, NGOs, third sectors, uh, companies. It's basically a status-centric uh, rules and few tasks and functions are assigned to citizens or not state agencies is very strongly reflects a state-centered rule. And this is very uh, bad for, for example, uh, smart city projects and use of the data by uh, uh, in, the go in a set of governance situation is a very status-centric uh, rule. This is uh, the cross tab, the attribute with the, the ontic, and now the attribute with the object is, again, a very uh, governo municipal, is, is uh, municipal government. We can see how, they, how much is, uh, they are thinking uh, to themselves and not in a broad way, in a in a, a vast way, but in a very uh, particular way. So uh, now Tainá will present the uh, the our innovation in this in this field. We apply a, a process of language natural language process to analyze the the data. Tainá, please. Thanks. So we conducted a quantitative analysis of the legislation previously, previously categorized by the IG. Our approach here is an adaptation of the methodology used in the article published in the Plus One Journal, which examined federal regulatory flow in Brazil, known as REGBR. It is important to note that the use of quantitativity and methods to analyze legislation is widely accepted internationally, with notable examples being the REG data research in the United States and the REG data in Canada. These studies serve as a fundamental reference for our analysis. So in this way, originally REGBR consisted of metrics such rest restrictiveness, linguistic complexity, popularity and influence in economic, economic sectors. For example, but here we adapted it only for restrictiveness and adapted for the method used to calculate linguistic complexity to analyze the diversity of the IG components. So after the categorization, we proceeded with analysis of restrictiveness. To do this, we employed the following formula.
to identify restrictive institutional statements, we used the only key operator element to, of the IG, which means we classify. That's for me, just a reiner Zufall. To identify restrictive institutional statements, we use the, the ontic operator element of the IG, which means we classified a statement as an obligation. This evaluation was applied to each of municipal decrees in our sample. The results were of the analysis of restrictiveness of LGPG regulation offering insights into numbers of restrictive institutional statements of the law present in each municipality. So the graph on the screen visually illustrates the results. The scale of numbers for analysis here from zero to one, where zero indicates the lowest level of restriction and one indicates the highest level of restrictions. On the X axis, we have each of the municipalities and on the other axis, the result of calculated formula. So the second metric we employed here was the diversity of IG elements, including attribute, aim, and object. For this analysis, we calculated the Shane Weaver Diversity Index, a measure based on information theory commonly used to access diversity in categorical data. And in this context, with the Shane Diversity Index formula is defined as the formula on your screen. And we adapt where you had we adapted there for like to simplify what we analyze we analyze it imagine you have a, a regulatory policy like rules from in the in specific industry in this case we use it at the lgpg so in this policy we you have different actors such as government agents or industry so we want to know how diverse these actors are in terms of this policy we measure this diversity by considering the total number of different actors we're looking at the policy. And the I, it's the way to represent each specific actor involved, number from one to N, so we compare them. Furthermore, the PI symbol represents the proportion, relative frequency of the categorical concerning the total number of categories in each muni municipality. In short, is it the fraction of the specific category concerning the total number of categories? Uh, so we can see the actors in this policy. Here, uh, the results in present in the graph uh, are scaling from zero to one. The closer to one, the greater the diversity. And values greater than one indicate high diversity, while close to zero reflect low diversity. On the X axis, we have each municipalities. In the other axis, we have the calculated index. So next, Lisandro will present the results of our research. Thank you, Taina, for the presentation. So, uh, why is analysis based on the metrics? This metrics interesting, and what does this tell about that tell us about institutional grammar? Again, a few slides, a few slides before we are seeing the Dunlop uh, provocation in the. Uh, in the conclusion of this, his article uh, made by a bibliometric review in the in the IG field, we need to be uh, be a step forward the this descriptive descriptive uh, level, and this reg data offer us a very interesting uh, a very interesting way to analyze and see the institutional grammar. 
So data governance is here the exercise of the authority and control over data management. The goal of data governance is to expand the value of data and minimize the related costs and risks. Data governance specifies the decision rights and authorities to define who, when, where, and how data can be collected, stored, and processed, and share data with an organization, for example. So in this sense, it's important to understand who is involved in data governance in Brazil's subnational governments. Uh, attributes in our cases are actors allocated in the data governance process. We found that rules are state-centric, EA, they make little provision for non-state actors, such third sector, civil societies and companies. Less diversity means fewer actors in the data governance process. Uh, they also some uh, there are also some institutional diversity. Some cities have more diverse rules. We've included more, more players. Uh, the analysis of restrictiveness shows a diversity in the institutional arrangement of the of the Brazilian municipalities. Future studies could analyze how municipalities create data-driving policies, such as smart city projects in the institutional environments with more restrictive or less restrictive strategies than others. The strategies adopted by the, by the documents analyze uh, and now reveal a major concern with establishing, establishing prohibitions and make little references to the, to, to the citizen rights. Uh, the aims refers to the action that the rule is, is intended to regulate. In this sense, more diversity targets indicate a bigger concern on the part of the municipality to span the range of the topics to be regulated. Within the logic of data governance, the more varied of aims of targets, more robust the institutional data governance structure structure. We found the data protection, the data protection strategies in Brazil state governments are strongly focused on procedural issues. They are concerned with certification, compliance, and less uh, with the using data to build policies and solutions for the problems. The object is the recipient of the action carried by the actor, the attribute described here. Uh, most of the institutional statements are focused on the process management and governance, and those who is denote to a strategic use by municipality public management to build solutions based on data appear in a small way. There is a great heterogeneity of the institutional arrangements when you're looking at the object. Our goal here was twofold to finish the presentation. The first goal is present our research on data governance in Brazil and uh, apply the institutional grammar to the Portuguese language is they are doing the first application in the institutional grammar framework in Brazil, uh, present a tool can serve by uh, the, we present here a tool is the reg data framework. They can serve the analytical, they can talk with the analytical efforts already built up around the IG, the red data framework will need to be adapted to each case. In some cases in the red, red, red data studies, for example, they are looking the how the law, how they regulate change over time, how they become more diverse, for example. In our case, it was impossible to do that uh, since the LGPD is, I don't know, four years old. But in cases with long time policies, we can adapt the reg data framework to be a more a historical of, uh, anal analysis uh, and see how the, 
how the institutional grammar uh, became more restrict, restrict, restrictive or more diverse uh, over time, how the attributes were uh, growing or not growing. So we hope that our research and our approach will inspire future studies. Thanks so much, guys, for the attention. Yeah. And now we are open to questions and 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 uh, doubts. And sorry for the for the language is our uh, English our second language. So sorry for that. All right. Yeah. Opening the floor to any questions that anyone has for Lizandra and his team. I have a question. Um, first, thank you so much for sharing this work um, with us. Um, I had two kind of different questions. Um, the first question is because we haven't seen applications of the IG to Portuguese before. Uh, I, I was just uh, wanting to hear your, any reflections you have on the applicability. Like, so where did you encounter any difficulties um, in trying to like fit the Portuguese language um, to these syntactic categories? And then the other question I had was about your um, diversity measure. So in this case, as I understand uh, your your construction of the diversity measure and um, how might to interpret it, how we might interpret it is that you're essentially looking at um, of all of the different um, attributes or objects um, represented in in the, each policy document. Um, how what are they receiving even attention across the statements or or rather are they uh, evenly represented so for example do you see that some actors sorry so it, is it basically capturing at the policy level whether you have certain attributes that are more reflected or more or more referenced more highly referenced than other actors and so I guess I was thinking about that from the interpretation side and what that means and kind of what that tells us about the, gov the, the governance in this situation, because I might imagine that in any given document, you, you would have um, at different attributes receiving different extents of att attention. Um, so why, why is it important? Why, from a governance perspective, is it important to think about how evenly, if you will, different actors are being addressed. And then kind of the same for the other components. Um, and what do you, what are the implications of that for thinking about governance uh, in, of data infrastructure? So anyway, that was a really rambling way to ask that question, but hopefully you you got my message. Sure, sure, sure. I, I, I understand. So the RecData is a worldwide methodology who's applied by the natural process language field and we adapt uh they are already adaptation like reg canada reg australia reg brazil reg brazil the reg brazil adaptations result in the plus one uh paper for example article so we look the reg data in in general terms in reg uh reg brazil and we reflect how can we adapt it this kind of approach because for example in some cases in for example in uh, aviation for example uh, airplanes uh, they look how they restrict uh, the loss are becoming over time for example mm. but in our terms is uh, is not make sense to do this uh, adaptation because it's not a law over time because it's just 4 years old in other terms, for example, the, the diversity was a uh, uh, thing they uh, are looking at. And we, we think, oh, in the data governance, diversity in the attributes means a lot because mm -hmm. they show how, may, how much actors, how many actors are included in the, in, the, in the municipality, for example, to do this, uh, the, the data governance. So uh, we adapt the 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 reg uh, framework in our terms because our object was too specific 
for example, in data, in, uh, in data use uh, water policy in Brazil, for example, is a 40, 50 years old, uh, five decades. So we can, uh, to look the water policy, we can uh, adapt in, the, uh, in a different way, the REC framework and do different kind of uh, questions because we have the, the time the time frame and here we don't. So I think our analysis is talking, for example, with uh, Thomas Oliver work, they, uh, she, he analyzed the networks, for example, uh, we have another's, another's perspective but always in the in in the concern of give to the IG um, a, a more analytical and complexity uh, approach to explain and and, uh, and use the IG for think um, to think another questions and uh, mm -hmm. not just the descriptive descriptive is is uh, is uh, the, the our first work here with the states, not the municipalities, that Maria present was just descriptive and was the first uh, application to the IG in the Brazilian Academy. But now we are thinking, okay, we can, uh, we need to go further. And we, we think the reg is an interesting, uh, interesting uh, framework to, to combine with, with IG. Mm -hmm. And relate to uh, your first question, the Brazilian, uh, the Portuguese structure of linguistic is is very similar to English. Oh, it's not, uh -huh. it's not for, for example, Korean is another structure <laughs> of uh, a few months uh, ago, a colleague uh, from uh, South Korea present their work is uh, uh, mind blowing. But uh, in Portuguese, it's the same structure, but uh, the RLs uh, component in the municipalities was very few because the, the, munici the, mu the municipalities decrease were more strategic and not uh, complete rules with punishments, for example, mm -hmm. because the punishment is, uh, is in the federal law, not the municipality, the, the, the city cannot uh, create new punishments, for example, to crimes in the data uh, in the in the data governance sectors. So or infractions, not just crimes. But mm -hmm. in the in our case, the, in Portuguese, it's not Portuguese, in the Brazil, the RLs structure is was is very shy in the municip in the municipal uh -huh. level. Because mm -hmm. the juridical structure in Brazil, yeah, the yeah. federal federal government's concerns and concentrate a lot of power in the in the ju jurisdiction uh, framework. Yeah, I see that. And, and actually, what you said um, <laughs> there about the ORLs is being shy uh, at the municipal level. Um, I was wondering, like, are there any kind of uh, cult? you know, like cultural, so to speak, uh, uh, norms that are reflected in the language. So for example, we had a colleague here that was presenting um, before on the design of Pakistani legislations. And what they found was that, you know, the use of some geontics is just not common, culturally speaking. Um, and so you see that reflected in the language. I mean, do you, it, anything like that kind of show up in the coding? No, 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 no. The attribute is always the attribute the the ontic the aim the object is all mm. is all the same uh, in English so okay is 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 easy for us <laughs> that's good that's good to hear okay thank you so much any other questions No other questions for Lysandra? I guess I'll ask another question. Okay. Right. Um, so uh, where do you plan to go next with this? Like, how are you, um, will you continue on with this analysis uh, and, and kind of do more studies in this case or? Yes, yes. 
Uh, so our first uh, goal is was present to the to in this in this day in this in this meeting because uh, is our first experimentation using the reg framework to and uh, apply in the IG framework. So now we are thinking to present in the in academic conferences and put uh, an article together to 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 take feedbacks in the in the research field. Mm -hmm. And after that, of course, uh, Dani Daniela Carvalho is the in here. Uh, they she she is my advisee in the master degree in here in FGV. And she will uh, work with the environment law, state law protections. And this kind of environment law protections is over time uh, based on. So we can, we need to readapt the, the, the reg uh, framework, the reg data framework to apply in uh, this research in that, uh, in his, her research. So we are intending to continue work with this uh with this methodology this approach this analytical approach and uh of course uh focus and improve the the uh discussion and conclusions uh part great thank you Well, if there are no other questions, then we will wrap up today's seminar. So thank you to Lisandro and to your team for joining us today and presenting your work. And thanks to everybody who attended. And we will see you next month. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you to your team. It's very Bye. interesting. And uh, they are very inspired by you, Saba. So it's, it's great oh. for, for them. <laughs> no, this has been a, a wonderful uh, a new application. And one, it's great to see the different methodologies and the techniques coming together. And I, I already actually, I'm working on a paper right now on an analysis right now that I think I might think about using kind of a diversity measure. I hadn't thought about that, but based on what you presented today, it's kind of inspiring me to see if that would work in this paper we're working on right now. So yeah, that's so, great. Yes, thank you so much, Saba, because uh, we are testing the IG framework since uh, last year and mm -hmm. let's do this, let's do that. And now we found direct data. We are working with this since uh, January and present uh, put together and present and see okay that's work that that's interesting means a lot for us so thanks so much great wonderful well I'm so grateful and I hope you have a wonderful day you too thank <laughs> you David. thank you yep. bye 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 thank you bye